got to be 5 o'clock somewhere. How's it going, movie fans? I am Jonathan Martinez. I am a man of movies, and I love film. I'm passionate about it. I just want to talk about film with you guys. Let's see what you guys think about films I talk about. Let's get into this. If you haven't already, please make sure you check out my last video. It's my review on The Exorcist. I think I got some good points. Let me know what you think. And please, make sure you comment down below your opinions on whatever I talk about, because that's what film is. Film is subjective. That's the beautiful thing about it. I'm going to have my opinions. You're going to have your own thoughts, and we can talk about them down in the comments below. All right, so today's video is going to be my take on the first movie that I have seen in 2020. When the lion's hungry, he eats. Yeah, I think I got to take another sip. So The Gentleman is directed by Guy Ritchie, who did the Aladdin reboot, which I kind of liked. I think there was enough differences in the movie to warrant a remake. Anyway, so the movie of The Gentleman stars Matthew McConaughey, and he has this huge marijuana empire over in England. He's a big deal over there, to say the least. But the thing is that McConaughey's character is looking to exit out of that career. And of course, when people start hearing the news that maybe he's going to step down and they can have a chance for this empire. A lot of wackiness ensues, gory violence, but in a comedic way ensues, leading all to a culmination of a who done it in the vein of a knives out. So I know Guy, Guy Ritchie, he's known for his unique film style. I haven't seen a lot of his movies, honestly. I think I've only really seen Aladdin. Yeah, I'm a film fan and I don't really know Guy Ritchie like that. So with that being said, I can't really compare Guy Ritchie's other works to this movie because I'm not really well versed in his works. So I can really just judge this movie on its own merits. And overall, I can say the movie's entertaining. Again, I haven't seen his other movies, but I find a hard time believing that this is his best work. Because even though I found some fun in it, it's, it's not the best movie ever. And it's not that I was expecting the best movie ever, but I was expecting at least something in the vein of what we got in the stylized Aladdin reboot. And I don't think we really got that. So like, let's start with some of the things that I really enjoyed about this movie. And the number one thing in my opinion that I really enjoyed was the framing aspect of it all. Because the whole movie is told in a very unique way. You have Hugh Grant's character and he's like this undercover journalist and he's trying to get money and he knows what's happening, the ins and out of this business that these gentlemen are doing. And so what Hugh Grant's character is trying to do is that he's trying to blackmail McConaughey's number one man and to giving him enough money that he could keep his mouth shut or else he's going to release this script that he made. Yeah, a script, a movie script, kind of on the nose. He's basically going to give it to the highest bidder. So some of the things he said were very over the top and we find out that those things really did happen and some things are way too over the top, which we then come to find out, no, it didn't happen. It was just written that way because of course you got to write a movie that way. The over the top action sequences in this movie are really fun, I got to say. And a lot of these action sequences are all intertwined with comedy and it'll entertain you at the very least while you're watching it. The characters also have this very vibrant personality. They're all very distinct, but their personalities are very over the top. And I use that word a lot because this movie is very over the top. And that's how Guy Ritchie does his movies that I can see that he is a very over stylized director in a sense. I can say that maybe for some people that don't really look into the nitty gritty of film, they'll have a really good time with how the story ends up playing out. But I feel that the script was very convoluted, I gotta say. Because throughout the movie I'm watching and I'm getting confused at all the moments where I'm supposed to be understanding and I'm getting so flustered in moments where I'm supposed to just be going with what the plot's taking me but I don't know where it's taking me. I don't understand what it's doing. Maybe it was some of the dialogue that they were using, some of the terminology they were using but just the way that the story was going, I was left really confused. I was left not knowing what we were getting from this Ultimately, where are we trying to go with this? That's a big downfall for me because if I don't know where I'm going in a movie, why am I here? It's not that it's not going anywhere. It's just that it's confusing, all right? That's the big overall word that I can use. It's confusing. We have Matthew McConaughey, Academy Award winner. We have Henry Golding. We have Charlie Hunnam. We have Hugh Grant. And with these great actors, I didn't like any of these characters. They're not likable one bit. 
they're entertaining. I can say that. Like, they're really entertaining. They're funny or they're smart and they're witty, but they're not likable. I mean, from when the movie starts to when the movie ends, you're not left with, wow, I really like that person. I can really relate with that person. I want that person to see it to the end. You don't feel that way. At least I didn't feel that way. The way I felt was, I don't care if any of these people, any of these characters die or something bad happens to them at least. The way that the script wrote them to be, I just didn't care for them. They're kind of written to be like like the scum of the earth. They're they're written to be to be villains. And I've seen movies where there are bad people, but they're written in such a way that we can relate with them. I can't say the same about this. By the end of the movie, you're kind of left with, you know, you know who the bad guy is and, and you know who the good guy's supposed to be. But if you just put them together and you didn't know anything about the story, and I just explain these characters and their motives to you, I don't think you'd be able to distinguish who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, honestly. And when it comes to the comedy, it's hit or miss, you know? And when it misses, it really misses to the point where I was in this stadium full of people and nobody was even giggling. But when it does hit, it hits. There's some really funny sequences in this movie intertwined with, like I said before, action. And it, it, it's just really funny. <laughs> His name is Fahok. It was spelled with a P-H, so it sounds like Fahok. Please! All right, Fahok. Come to Fahok. Please! But I don't think the comedy can help it tip over as a must-see film for me. You know? The most integral part of this movie, the most important part of this movie, and the part that I liked the most is the relationship between Hugh Grant's character and Charlie Hunnam's character. Hugh Grant is the one with the script and whatnot who's trying to blackmail. And just the way they bounce off each other, bring the comedy in this movie, their relationship for me and their dialogue just seemed instinctual and the way they were just going back and forth is the best part of the movie. If I can recommend to see this movie for one reason, just see it for that. See it for their relationship because it's great. From what the trailers and what the marketing was saying, Matthew McConaughey was going to be like the biggest star in this movie. He arguably is the biggest star in this movie, but he didn't have the biggest role in this movie. I got to give that to Charlie Hunnam's character and I don't know if that was to its, its deficit. Because Charlie Hunnam's a great actor and all, but he's not Matthew McConaughey. And for him to be carrying most of the film the way I saw it, maybe next time we just make better casting choices. Again, that is my opinion. Film is subjective. If you watch the movie, maybe you think something different completely. I just want to put that, and I'm going to keep repeating that so the day I die, okay? In the end, the movie sets up for a sequel, of course. I don't know how much money it's going to make. We'll find out on Monday when the box office results come out. And I'd be okay with watching a sequel, but I just have to be promised that the script is going to be a lot smoother of a ride plot-wise. Instead of throwing so much information of an event and characters that we just got introduced to and we don't know a lot about, maybe now that we know what this world is all about, the sequel will make a lot more sense to me. All in all, should you watch it? Honestly, if you got nothing better to do and there's no other movies that really call to your attention that's in theaters right now, you should watch it. If not for the comedy and the wacky action sequences, watch it for Guy Ritchie. He's a pretty good director. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Please comment down below your thoughts if you saw this movie. Give me your personal take. And listen, if you have any recommendations on some older films that I should see for my In Retrospect film series, let me know also. It's a series that I want to get more into when I don't watch movies throughout the week. Give me a like, give me a share, give me a subscribe. Till next time, movie fans. Oh, 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 oh,